What's going on, Pro Guides family? It's Sergeant Frost, and today we're going over 50 things everyone should know. All of these can easily be the difference maker in any type of round, so make sure to watch all the way to the end. The tips differ in difficulty, so no matter if you're just beginning or have been playing since the beta, this guide will definitely have something for you. Now, without further ado, let's make sure to like and subscribe and let's get on to it. Firstly, when playing Omen, pay attention to the triangle. It shows you where the smoke will land and makes one way super easy to throw. You can place a one way in way more angles than you might think. Two, be nice to your teammates. Even if you don't like them, yelling at them will only make them play worse, and they might even start throwing. Being nice is free and it's the easiest way to increase your win rate. When playing Astra, you can suck people off the bomb, but if you coordinate well with your teammate, you can actually counter it. Just get in between the center of the suck and bomb diffuser and the suck won't cancel the diffuse. If you're ever unsure if you can or can't plant somewhere, the bomb zone will light up when you're carrying the spike, so it's easy to see. Talking about the spike, you can see when someone's diffusing it as it'll turn red. Great to know if you quickly jiggle and can only see it for a split second. When defending on bind, don't use the teleporter from A short to mid. Unless your opponents are already on B site, this is simply just a death trap and it very rarely works. When playing Sage on split, you don't always have to wall mid. Using a wall on B heaven or A main is perfectly fine and oftentimes even better. If you want to really improve, it's always better to get a mentor to guide you. Having a coach drastically helps you improve as a player, and it's honestly the best way to progress up the rank ladder as a player. And of course, if you're looking for a coach, then we've got you covered on ProGuides.com, where we have top immortal and radiant ranked players who would love to help you improve as a player. So if you're interested, make sure to click the link in the description to get started. If you're playing KO on Breeze, for example, always try to catch the enemy Viper or Sentinel with your knife. If you manage to catch them with your knife, you and your teammates can execute into sight much easier. We're at number 10 now. Sova's ult cast sound doesn't actually give away your location, so you can use it to fake your location quite effectively. You don't always have to get frags to win a game or have a great impact. Especially on agents like Sova and controllers, staying alive for your utility is much more valuable than constantly looking for an opening. And being too focused on kills can even throw rounds. If you're playing a utility heavy agent, try to play around your agent's strengths and put more focus on using utility to win. You can wall bang lamps on bind with Odins, Guardians, and even Sheriffs. Use it as you will on defense, and even if you're on an eco, you may as well fire some sheriff shots through as you might just kill someone. Planting even after the sound is ended still gives you an ultimate orb and money, so if it's possible to do so, then do so. This applies both after you win a round or lose a round. Pay attention to the ult economy. How a round will develop can oftentimes easily be read just by looking at what ults are available for both teams. For example, don't play in lamps when they have a brimstone ultimate. Tip 15. Abuse the marshal. It's broken. That's it. That's the tip. Nah, but seriously, Marshall is a really strong gun right now, and it's pretty busted on anti-eco rounds. So if you're playing a character like Jet, Reyna, or Chamber, or even just like to AWP, definitely look to run this when econ is low or you're up against armorless opponents. Try not to crouch too much. It's good to use sometimes, but in many cases it makes you a lot easier to hit than anything else. Omen and Reyna don't have real flashes. They only apply short sight and reduce sounds. If you play close enough, you can still see your enemies. If you're playing agents like Killjoy and Phoenix, try to farm ultimate orbs. Your ultimates are super strong, and especially on Phoenix, you can easily get 3-4 to four ultimates per half. Warm-up and aim training are not the same thing. Warm-up is to get ready for your games. Aim training is for when you're trying to improve your aim past its current level. When rifling, shoot short bursts and stay away from spraying. Your gun gets very inaccurate very quickly, and there's no consistent spray pattern. You're better off cutting your spray short and strafing and starting a new burst. On Ascent B main, you can place a Sage Wall on the box to get a nice little angle onto site. Definitely don't use it every round, but once or twice a game this can give you a nice free kill. Talking about that box, if you're defending B and the enemy Killjoy has an ultimate, you can buy a Sheriff or an Odin and spam it straight through the wall. If you ask me, 800 credits for one of the strongest ultimates in the game is not a bad trade. There are some instances where spamming like this doesn't work, namely if they place the lockdown behind this box, but if they do that you can always just hide in the back site like here. Also, don't blame your teammates, even if it was clearly their fault. In order to improve at Valorant, you need to fix your own mistakes, and not those of your teammates. We understand bad teammates can be frustrating, but the way you get better is by focusing on yourself, not on them. If you want to give yourself a more interesting experience in the range, you can place a Sage Wall to switch up the angles. It's pretty helpful for peeking. When playing Chamber, make sure to place one of your teleports in spawn right away. This is so that you can place a trip on one side of the map and then still teleport back to spawn if you want to place another one elsewhere or simply change your mind. A great habit to get into, and if you don't need the TP, well, you can just take it away before the borders drop. When playing Jet, you can dash into your own smoke to make space for teammates behind you. It's a great way to offset the enemy's crosshair placement and allow your team to run out more easily. 
When playing Sky on defense, using a flash early in order to get more info is a great idea, especially if you have two. Your flash is refreshed, so if you're not using them early, then you'll just usually end up using them less. May as well get some info, it could just win you a round. When playing Cypher, make sure to switch up your trips regularly, unless it's just there for info. If you don't, it'll be super predictable and people will easily be able to shoot them. If you're playing Jet against a Sage that loves to wall showers, counter her by dashing preemptively. It's a great way to get an opening, and it'll force her to think twice about placing that same wall again. On the same map, if you're playing defense and your opponents are lacking a Sage, try to hold on to showers and spam the smokes if they try to go A. If you have two players doing this, it's essentially impossible for them to get the bomb down, and they'll be forced to rotate or plant without smokes. When defending with Neon, sometimes all you have to do is stay in spawn and sprint to whichever site your enemies show up to first. Neon is the fastest agent in the game, so you can basically stack any bomb site when using her. When retaking A on Ascent, consider shooting this recon bolt under heaven. If there's players there, it's usually a pretty easy kill or at least info. Don't do this every round though, as it'll get predictable pretty soon. As long as you position yourself correctly, it's pretty easy to smoke all over the map. So if you're a brimstone, consider playing around lamps on Bion or A short on Ascent. Sova darting behind an execute is a great way to catch some easy kills through a smoke. People running in are usually pretty focused on what's in front of them, and not what's pinging them from behind. Remember, shoot directly above the entrance to make it as annoying as possible to shoot. When using a Phoenix, Viper, or Neon wall, make sure just to look up a bit. This is so your wall actually goes as you intended it to and doesn't end up being stuck in the ground. This may not be an issue for more experienced Viper players, but the amount of times I've seen a friend try Viper for the first time only to miss their wall completely and wonder why it did, meant that I simply had to include it in this video. On Bind, if you suspect a player is playing on top of the box's right of shower, you remember that you can simply spam them and clear the angle without having to expose yourself. When droning on Sova, always make sure there's a teammate ready to follow it. If there's not, your enemy is able to take back all the control just as quickly as they got it, and the ability will essentially be wasted. Talking about the Sova drone, when you want to rush, remember that the Sky Dog is a lot quicker. So if you have to choose between the two in a rush, opting for the Tasmanian Tiger is usually the better option. When pushing A on Ascent with the Killjoy ultimate, you can combo it by using your Brim ultimate late. This guarantees a free sight and counters anyone trying to be cheeky by getting into the right corner of heaven. If you're playing Omen and your opponents have bomb, you can rotate to the furthest bomb site, ult on top of the spike, and cancel immediately to steal it away and plant on the bomb site. A great way to clutch around that seconds before probably felt like an easy win for your teammates. There is one more tip connected to this one, and that's if you suspect the enemy omen might just try to steal TP the spike, you can counter it by standing directly on top of it, leaving the enemy omen shocked and confused as to why his cool ult play didn't work out. Now that we're on the topic of controllers, if you're playing a controller like Brim, Omen, or Astra and you're on an eco, make sure to buy a second smoke on attack. One smoke isn't enough for an execute, but two is. The max one extra smoke can cost you is 150, and that's not a lot considering it can easily be the difference maker and win you a round. Another great play on Ecos, although it honestly works well on gun rounds too, is using Chamber's TP ability to bait for a teammate. Chamber can hold pretty aggressive angles and then simply TP out, so holding a more aggressive angle than usual is not apparent, making it a great bait. Here you can see Liquid using exactly that. Speaking of playing for teammates, when ulting with Yoru, that's what you should be aiming to do. With the recent changes to his ultimate, using it for yourself is simply not as effective. Instead, use it to spot opponents for your teammates and harass enemies with your utility. When playing Killjoy on Ascent, you can place your turret here to not only watch short, but also mid push and even deep mid. A great turret that covers a lot of ground. It even allows you to peek mid safely without getting alt from A short. Another cool tip is that when you're playing Viper, Killjoy, or KO, you can use the footstep circle to create molly lineups on the fly. Look on radar to see the outer edge of it, aim all the way up, and run and shoot your lineup. There are two requirements, namely that the sky is open and that your ground level is similar, but otherwise it works great and can be used pretty much anywhere. If you're playing Reyna or Omen and the enemy Killjoy uses Lockdown, you can avoid getting detained by using your abilities. On Reyna, you can dismiss right before the ultimate goes off, and on Omen you can ult TP away, then cancel it after it goes off, and then you'll be in a position and ready to fire. Oh, if you've ever planned on buying a shorty, always drop it on the ground and buy back a classic. Then after the buy phase ends, you can pick your shorty back up and have a classic as a backup option. The shorty definitely isn't a terrible gun and it has its place in certain scenarios, but being stuck with it is horrible and oftentimes you're better off with the classic, so it's great to have as a backup. Lastly, don't care about your deathmatch stats. Deathmatch is all about challenging yourself, warming up, and working on your aim. But oftentimes, a lot of people think deathmatch is a tool to measure their skills and they try to get a good KD and always try to win. This then results in all kinds of bad behaviors such as camping and memorizing spawns, and even just going full volume and waiting for footsteps to make a move. 
And even though I'm sure you can get a pretty good scoreline doing that, it's not the best way to improve. That's it, that's 50. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And ring that bell notification icon if you want to see more content just like this. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and I'll see you guys in the next one.